have done it once. Now you need to do it again. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are jumping into Ad Infinitum? Ad Infinitum? I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm dumb, so... This has been in my wish list for a while, and I'm pretty excited to play it, so I hope you guys enjoy. Looks like we are... writing down Morse code. Morgan, I don't, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. For months, you've cursed your hours spent staring at these tables. Now you wish you could stay with them forever. Okay, your diary, you never let it out of your sight. Zyken Untegbush? <laughs> I don't know. Had to pronounce that at all. I am not good. Okay, so let's take that. Alright. So today we're going to be playing the prologue. And uh, if you guys want to see more, let me know in the comments down below. Okay. So we have our little shelter. I think that this is World War One, World War Two, maybe World War One. I forget. Um, I should have read up on it before. They want you to storm the French trenches. You pray you're wrong, but it feels like a death sentence. Yeah. Okay. Looks like someone's been repairing something here. It's a shame you don't understand all the technical stuff. Looks like some speakers. Huh. Your art exhibition never happened. You're the last member of the Blue Dove. What was that noise? All oh, it's people sleeping. You wanted to send a postcard home, but you couldn't find the right words to write. Now it's too late. So are we going out to, like, I mean, they want us to store, storm the French trenches. The Leutnant's sending us over the top. The whole company. Okay. Come on, get ready. So this is locked. Oh, I need to, I should probably go up, right? Oh, there's my rifle. Don't want to forget that. That looks like a German helmet, but they were speaking in British? Maybe for the sake of uh, me being able to understand. Rifle, a 98 model loaded, safety off. Absolutely take that. Art, equip or unequip the rifle. Okay, yeah. If you radio for help instead of fighting, you'll be arrested for dissertation. Oh, there's some more stuff over there. Or for desertion, not dissertation. <laughs> Our dissertation. I spoke to him, but I don't know if he understood what I was saying. Okay. I spoke to him, but I don't know if he understood what I was saying. So zoom. Can we? Yeah, I thought maybe we'd be able to read that, but apparently not. Okay, no worries. The letters blur before your eyes. Nevertheless. With a little effort, you managed to decipher them. All trench stations. Operation Morgan Ground. Ground. Morgan Ground. Okay. Aim the rifle. Shoot the rifle. Okay. Oh gosh. Door. Grab doors. Okay. Cool. That's locked. Guess we're going up. First platoon awaiting orders, sir. Who's talking? Second platoon awaiting orders, sir. Okay, so we can't go down that way. Man, this is my type of game.
Berlin Road. I'm working on it, I'm sorry. Wait, which way do I go? Which way do I go? Not that way, okay. So there's only gonna be one way to go. I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out which way to go. Run. Those are my guys? Just, just go. Go over that, can't go over that. Caution, enemy fire. Muddy path. Are those my guys? I hope not, or I hope so. Hope not. Hope so. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so stressed out right now. Soldier dies. As I say, keep your head down. Oh, go oh no. You crouch. Oh, we can't crouch and move. Just go, just go, just go. Oh gosh. Not the water, not the water. Do I need to be shooting people? This is war, but I don't know who to shoot. I don't know who's on my team. Oh, oh gosh, no. Right into the barbed wire. Oh, gosh. No, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Is this the same guy? <gasps> Are we playing like a brother? What is going on? Where's can I see my can I see my hand? Matches, one strike, one spark, that's all it takes. Yeah, we'll take those for sure. Um documents backpack matches. So find out who's with you in the house. Okay, so we've got, it's, I guess the little uh, icon at the bottom, the one that was the uh, the book that just popped up was a, uh, maybe a save indication. Photo of military company. Okay. Locked, locked. Dear four, here is a copy of the Morse code alphabet I made for you. You probably know it from school. It's a language all its own, which I now speak 
fluently. Thankfully, my telegraph shelter is in a safe location. Something that's already saved my life twice. I'll be on leave again soon. Will I see you this time? Or will it just be mother again? Please, take good care of her. Your brother. Okay, so that was a postcard from May 3rd, 1915. So this is World War One, Obviously. Okay. There we go. Light that room up. Tin soldier. The tin soldier's men hang on his every command. Okay. Give your brother his dagger back. I'm sorry, Paul. I... Now get out, you dirty little thief. You're no son of mine. Okay, wait. So are we playing the brother of the guy that we just, uh... That we were just playing? Mirror's broken. You can't see your reflection. Just a shadow. Okay. That's kind of what I'm taking from it. That we're playing the brother of the guy that went into battle a little bit ago. Anyway. What? Johannes. Is that our name, Johannes? Toy gun. The well worn toy gun has seen his fair share of wars. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, what is that? Oh, is it like a tin can? Um. Like you put the string between the two tin cans and talk into it so you can talk to each other? Maybe? Okay. Let's go out in the house. Wow, this house is... Kind of creepy. Close that off. Okay, we'll go over this way, I think. Locked. I feel worse with every day that passes. Please, Mother of Mercy, help me. I can't bear another injection. His father, his society, his poison. He says I am mad. He says the cuckoo is my son. But I know what I know. They've taken everything from me. My children. My language. Even my name. He threw my Bible on the fire and smashed your statues. But they can never take you away from me, Mother of Mercy. Mother of Sorrows. Huh. Medicine. Is that our mom? That's talking in that? Is that something that she wrote, maybe? Don't know. Okay, let's keep going down this way. Nothing there. Okay, so shift is toggle. Keep that in mind. I don't want to rush through this. Okay, all the lights just went out. Don't like that. Got really dark there. So it's locked as well. Locked. Locked. Okay. Let's go back around. That's so weird. Why are the lights just going off here? Oh, but only whenever I'm here. Strange. Locked. This was our room. Needs a key. Your brother's room is locked, but you're sure you saw something. It can't be him, can it? Cog. A heavy cog. It smells of oil. We'll take that. If we're going to need it. Letter. Elevator. Berlin. October 4th, 1918. Subject. Installation of an elevator system. Dear Director General von Schmidt. The work will be completed by the end of the week and build in-house. E. Grubert, Deputy Director. Carl von Schmidt and Company. Paint Factories, Berlin. So they're installing an elevator in the house. Looks to be... Yeah. Looks to be the case. An elevator up to the attic. It must be new. You wonder what's up there. 
Okay. So we saw our brother? What did that say again? I need to read that again. Your brother's room is locked, but you're sure you saw something. It can't be him, can it? So we think we saw our brother, right? That's what I'm taking from that. And is our brother the one that just got destroyed in the war or died in the war? Or what happened? I mean, his hand was gone and he was stuck in barbed wire. I doubt he made it out. What was that? Somebody was just walking there. Hello? I need to look first. Hello? Okay. It will leave you alone. Oh. Don't like that at all. Okay, so what do we have in here? Obviously. What's up there in the attic? Thinking about it makes your stomach turn. I wonder why. Carl has become as cruel as his father. I can speak neither of the war nor of my lost sons. I am not even permitted in their rooms. The rooms of my own sons. I'm not permitted to exist at all. If only I were dead too. So Carl, is Carl the, I assume that's our dad and obviously her husband. She's lost sons, plural. So there's at least two sons, if not more. Picture of my mother. Mother, when you were young, you, she would spend every day in the winter garden until grandfather came to live with you, that is. Huh. Okay. Mechanical bird. Painting, Master Doloroso. What a strange painting. You never saw Mother the way he did. Hmm. What's this? Orchest Orchestrion music rule? A march written in honor of our great general, Lothar von Schmidt. Nothing in there. That's locked. Mother. When I hear the cannon's thunder, I can no longer be angry with Father. Instead, I worry for all of you. Have you heard from Paul at all? He hasn't replied to a single one of my letters. Johannes. Johannes. So we're not Johannes? Or did we send that to our mom before? I, I'm... I'm lost. I'm trying to figure it out in my head, but I don't know if we're going to figure it out quite yet. We'll just kind of leave it for now. Okay, birdie, you need to calm down over there. St. Balbine postcard in French. Little sister, how are you? We went to Berlin to visit you, but the maid turned us away. There was an old man shouting in German, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. Did we go to the wrong address? Why do you never write anymore? Did you get the singing bird? I remember how we used to sing in the square in front of the church and marvel at the little golden birds in the window by mother and father's cafe. If things have become unbearable, please come back home to us. How are the children faring? Please write. St. Balbine, May 3rd, 1908. Julie. Okay. So is that our, that's about, that's to our mom, maybe from her brother or from her brother. We've read that one, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go. So I wonder if that was our mom and she's just depressed. Sounds like she's playing music in there. And it's so dark in some of these spots. Dearest mother, I am glad that you have at least survived the cold weather. But I know how scarce food has become at home. <sighs> it would be best if we just surrendered. But I'm sure Father doesn't want to hear such talk. He probably thinks that the war will bring him glory and honor. Just like Grandfather. <sighs> glory and honor perished in the very first winter of this war. 
how we wanted to go to war. How foolish we were. Nevertheless, I shall write to Father. I am worried about Paul. Johannes. So it's Johannes. April, 1917. Okay. So are we, maybe these are ones that we wrote to our mom while we were in the war, and is Paul the one that we were starting, or played at the beginning, maybe? That's, that's what I'm thinking. Also, that's very accurate, too. Like, back then, people really wanted to go to war thinking, like, like they romanticized it, and once they got there, it was nothing like they were expecting. Packet of salt, so we'll take that. Okay. Just looking at the picture makes you feel sick. Who would paint something like that? Oh, there's like bodies and trenches. That's kind of what it looks like. Letter from Frau Brugil, Berlin, December 20th, 1918. Dear Frau von Schmidt, I have brought you some potatoes. You have always been kind to me and given me a little extra money. So I'm glad to be able to do something for you in return. None of us has very much right now, but I know it must be twice as hard for you. Please take care of yourself. I hope I may return to work for you again soon. Perhaps when the winter is over. Your friend, Ursula Brugel. Okay. That's locked there. Oh, there's one here. Kitchen work rota. Kitchen duty and house cleaning rota. 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. So that's just a list. Uh, like rotation, cleaning, and... Okay, cool. I can't get back there. Okay, let's get down this hallway. I wonder if we can get in here. Mother would often lock herself in the music room for hours on end, but not today. You won't allow it. Okay, well, uh, we don't really have a choice there. <laughs> She's kind of already in there. It is only music that saves me. Is there a heart in the world that cannot be softened by it? But when Carl plays that terrible orchestrion and his father's music again, I feel sick. The walls crumble, and everything comes crashing down around me. It makes me want to die. But I know where he keeps the key. Okay, well, where's the key, then? Collecting hints and documents. When you find documents that are relevant to completing the puzzle, you automatically collect them. You can reread them at any time in your inventory by pressing tab. Other documents remain in the game world. You can reread them by simply interacting with them again. Okay, so let's take a look here. So, orchest or orchestrion, orchestrion, orchestron. I don't know how to pronounce it, whatever. So, that's a clue then. So, backpack, we got the cog, the music roll, salt, objectives, find a way into the music room. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so, there's more matches. Take those. Um, let's take a look in here real quick. Light that up. Letter about orchestrion. I need to learn how to pronounce that. Dot, dot, dot. Hope, dear general, that this orchestron and the march we have sent you will bring a small piece of the battlefield into your home for you and your family to enjoy so that you may always be reminded of both your own countless victories and those of our German forefathers. The Orchestron is the machine gun of the musical world. It will solve all your problems in one fell swoop. Your brothers of the Order of the Red Eagle. So is that another clue? Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh. So we got to put this in here. Okay, so we got to find the key and stuff for it first. Orchestron repairs. Dear Director General, someone seems to have been playing around with your orchestron. A number of parts have been deliberately removed. I have found the cylinder and installed it, but there are no signs of the missing cog. Likewise, the music roll of which you spoke is nowhere to be found. I have placed the key back into the chest in the entrance hall. So you will proceed... We will now proceed with the installation of the elevator. Respectfully, Klaus Walters. So, okay, so we've got the cog. Or no, we don't have the cog. We've got the handle thingy. Um, but we found one of the pieces of music and the keys in the entrance hall. Okay. 
Because what is... Oh, so there's the cog. Okay, so we do have the cog. All right. So I wonder where the entrance hall is. So we can go in there. I'm going to wait a second. Red candle, the sweet scent of red wax permeates in the area. Let's take that. Mine now. Probably going to need that. Oh, somebody's broken in? Yeah, there's footprints. Hey, stop pushing! It's not my fault you're such a slow poke. And it's not my fault you can't do a boost up right. I've told you to, no climbing in through the window. But you didn't open the door. Why not for ages? And no one answered. Oh, boys. Come on in then, but keep the noise down. Your grandfather's sleeping. Okay. So maybe we broke the window when we were younger? Okay, I'm gonna go into this room over here first, because that looks like maybe furthering the story a little bit. More. Oh gosh, there's so much. Okay. So it's the lock. Looks like it goes down to a cellar. You can't open that up. Man, it's so dark back in here. Okay. This house is so big. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, I'm going to be so lost. Okay, let's... Does this... Hold on. I need to check something. Yes, okay, cool. Alright, I got my bearings. Okay. Keep those open. Oh, okay, so this... Man, everything's just so well connected. All right. That's a horrifying wolf. With the deepest regret, we hereby report that the sons of our director general and grandsons of the great general Lothar von Schmidt, Paul von Schmidt, born 5th of March, 1899, and Johannes von Schmidt, born 3rd of October, 1893, have met their heroic deaths on the Western Front. May they rest in peace. Berlin, 12th of October, 1917. Karl von Schmidt and Co. Paint Factories. Okay, so we aren't Johannes. Johannes and Paul both died in the war. Picture of you and your brother. Wait, what? You, Your gaze is drawn to the obituary alongside it. You fought and they just gave up on you. Wait, what? Maybe we are one and this is... Okay. Getting a wee bit confessled now. Sympathy card. My heartfelt condolences to the loss of your two sons, your friend, you Bruegel. Berlin, October 27th, 1917. The craze are called and we all answered with God in our hearts. Wait. 1917. Hold on a second. That was 1917. I need to look at something because I could have swore the note that we wrote was from 1918 or it might have been 1916. 1915. Okay, never mind. Okay. Before we head upstairs, I'm going to go over here and take a look around on the rest of this floor here. There's more matches. We'll take all these candles, I guess. I don't really know what we need them for, but... Newspapers containing lists of casualties. You don't want to read them. Can I use these candles for... 
No. Okay. Thought maybe we could like use them for a source of light, but I guess not. So we came through there. Doctor's note, patient, Magdalena von Schmidt. In order to treat your wife's pronounced hysteria, melancholia, she must be spared any kind of emotional strain. She must avoid any objects or persons that might trigger an episode. I recommend one injection every two days until her symptoms start to improve. Daily injections are recommended during more severe melancholic phases. Dr. Dritch, Dreich. June 11th, 1908. I mean, it makes sense. <gasps> Holy crap. Scared me. That she would be having these issues if both of her sons were killed. That's a horrifying painting. <laughs> now you're wet too. Stop splashing. Mama, he got water on me and now I'm all wet. Come and sit on the bank with me. There you go. Now, put your feet in the water. Nice and warm, isn't it? Warm and wet. <laughs> Look at the sailboats. They're so fast. Oh. Fast. So I bet they're going to America. From Vanze, the lakes aren't that big. Well, who knows? Maybe they'll find a way. They could sail down the harbor, then the Elba, and all the way to Hamburg, the gateway to the world. From there, anything's possible. Hmm. Okay. So what do we have here? Oh, are these needles for the injection? Syringe and vial. Quicksilver, 10 milliliters. Carl von Schmidt and Company, paint factories. Okay. May 25th, 1916. Magdalena refuses to accept that both our sons have now taken up service in the name of the Kaiser and the people. This is madness. I never wanted to believe father, but perhaps he was right. Perhaps she cannot be helped. Ever since father came to stay with us nine years ago, she has changed completely. I have administered Quicksilver. After a brief protest, she finally quietened down. Hmm. Okay. So it started whenever we decided to join the military? Right? Yeah. Okay, so there's the key. All right, so now we can... Now we can go back. And put the cog in, maybe? So we can put that in there? Yep. Okay. Turn off the orchestra to place this object. What do you mean, turn it off? It's not on, is it? Oh, we're gonna have to... Get that open. There we go. Put the cog back where it's supposed to be. There we go. have to stay there there's so much music going on all at once I feel like I'm going crazy mom Wait, what the dummy it almost seems to be watching you the heck? This time I 
felt him. It was as if my Johannes was standing next to me, placing his hand on my shoulder. Herr Dupre was right. With each session we are drawn closer, I can feel it. There has been a spate of strange coincidences. It is a sign. I have been working on the dummy again. I am trying to fill it with life so that Johannes will accept it and finally return to me. Wow, okay, so... Are we... So are we playing the mom? That might be it. And she's trying to make this dummy because she thought she saw Johannes and is like expecting him to like possess it and return to her. Herr Dupre and I made use of the time to take a tour of the house. He didn't want to see the cuckoo. He believes me. When we entered the salon, he said he felt an icy chill right where the old tyrant died. He brought nothing but misfortune upon us, even when he was still alive. Herr Dupre says that the house attracts many angry souls. He says I should use charms, spirit bells, and knocking three times for the Trinity to try and ward them off until our next session. The angels will aid me in this. I want to believe him, but the awful cuckoo knocks too and calls out and wants to eat constantly. It is driving me out of my mind. <sighs> okay, so there's another clue. Let's take a look, because there's this right here. I want to wait on that. Um, the ivory keys are cool to the touch. A shiver runs down your spine. Trees taking root. A gift from Santa Balbina among Carl's father's exotic plants. A piece of my home. Huh. You hardly dare to look. The picture reminds you of things you would rather forget. Okay. Strange pendulum. Wonder what it could be for. Okay, um. So let's take a look at the objectives. Someone rang the front doorbell. Oh, okay. Oh, I can barely hear it over the music. I might have to turn the music down, actually. Okay. I turned the music down a little bit because some, some of it's kind of overwhelming and a little bit too loud. So. Oh, our door just pooped. What's this? Letter from the Spiritualist. Dear Frau von Schmidt, Due to your unpaid bills and your husband's threats of physical violence against my person, I regret to inform you that I will not be able to guide you through your spiritual session in person today. However, knowing how desperately you need the aid of the angelic powers in these dark times, I am enclosing a wax cylinder with my instructions and the invocation of the Angelo Angeloi? Angeloi? In addition to this, please find enclosed silver candlestick holders. The consecrated pendulum, which reacts sensitively to spiritual vibrations, particularly those of an evil nature, should still be in your possession from my last visit. I've taken the liberty of adding the cost for these items to your last outstanding payment. With you in spirit, and Dupre. Wax cylinder from the spiritualist. Phonographic cylinder containing a recorded invocation from the spiritualist. Candlestick holders. Five lead candlestick holders. The silver paint is already starting to flake off. Okay, and we had how many? Whoa. What? This is my ball, and don't you forget it! I just wanted to play with it. Get your own! But mine isn't red. You stubborn little so-and-so. All right, then. But make sure you bring it back. Promise? I promise. 
Okay, so I feel like we're gonna have to use the- Because we have- how many candles? We have five candles, and we've also got the five candlestick holders. So we're gonna have to do something in here, I feel like, with everything. Right? According to the letter from the spiritualist, this pendulum is sensitive to spiritual vibrations. Okay. Okay, well, what are we supposed to be doing? Play the recording on the wax cylinder. Wait, what? Oh, over here? Yeah. There's no wax cylinder inside. Okay, so how do we get the... There we go. Follow my words to the letter in order to ensure the success of your spiritual session in my absence. Pause the playback of my voice on the wax cylinder after each step until you have correctly completed the step in question. Begin by placing the five silver candlestick holders I sent you on the table. Naturally, the beads have been blessed with the water. and the matches. Very good. Place the candles in the candlestick holders. Do you have the salt for the next step? Good. The consecrated pendulum will now show you the order in which you need to mark out the lines of the witch's foot between the candles. Use the pendulum, then mark out the lines with the salt. Once you have done this, we can proceed further. Okay, so we gotta mark out lines with the salt. So there? Then to where? To there? I don't like this at all. Obviously, it's going to be that. Okay. Once the sign is complete, you can light the candles. Okay. Very good. Now, find the personal item that belonged to the deceased. Try the red ball. We have had some success with it in the past. Yeah, that's so. Do you have the ball that belonged to your son? Good. Now take your seat at the table. We are ready to begin the sales. Take the deceased's personal object and place it in the center of the witch's foot. I repeat, take the ball. And place it carefully in the center of the sign. We call tonight upon the Angolori. Know that the occultist Dupre, whose voice speaks to you now and who has studied the chronicles of Akasha, is aware of your presence.
No, don't, don't, don't want it to happen. 